Watching Rockets basketball has to be like a chore at this point. To watch this team make unclear rotations and decisions that don't make sense. Like, there's no way around it. To see this team, I think it's 1-12 and 12 right now. Uh, watch the Grizzlies beat down on the Rockets for God knows how long. When the Rockets used to beat down on the Grizzlies for years. And I know I've been blessed with James Harden and a little bit of Tracy McGrady. And dealt with some mediocre years but was saved by James Harden and that whole squad. And I, I've had playoff basketball for practically all my time watching NBA basketball. But this hurts and it's it sucks and i'm sure there's plenty of teams that feel happy about this i mean trust me i i didn't think they were fouls but it's it benefited my team james harden was one of my favorite players he still is one of my favorite players but i can understand why teams feel infuriated such as like the warriors dominating them but now everyone loves steph curry again and everyone still hates james harden balance is restored i guess but I'm here to talk about the Houston Rockets and more specifically Steven Silas and what is he doing? I don't know what the goal for this team is and that's how a lot of people on Twitter and a lot of people whenever I talk about Rockets basketball it's like what is the goal? It's rebuilding right? You don't have any superstars and you're trying to rebuild this team that is the logical next step is play the young guys. But you know what you actually do? You sign Daniel Tice to an overpaid contract and you start him. Then you go and keep Daniel House, who doesn't fit the direction of this team. You keep Eric Gordon. You don't find a trade partner for John Wall, which I don't blame the front office for because it's hard to get that contract moved. But you don't get more pieces and you proceed to continually put in these veterans that lose the Rockets games. I understand you're not trying to win every single game, but you... In a rebuild, you're supposed to win some games. You're supposed to have 25, 20 wins, not one. And it's November 16th as, as the date of this recording. And they may win tomorrow, may win the next game. I don't know when they play next because I don't really want to watch them right now. And that was the frustrating thing about this year is at least, or the saving grace of this year was at least we had four first round picks that we could play. And it would at least be exciting to watch them grow. But we can't even watch them grow. It's like putting the it's like putting plants out in the Sahara Desert with no water. We are playing Jalen Green every night, who he's trying to develop, and uh, I don't think a lot of Rockets fans are being patient with him, and it sucks because you're starting to see Cade Cunningham go off and Evan Mobley start to grow, and it feels like Jalen is just trying to get used to a complex offense that really doesn't fit him, and it doesn't fit the rest of the offense. You have Kevin Porter Jr. who's trying to be a point guard I understand I'm going very fast but there's so many things I want to get off my chest about this team but we're gonna start bit by bit I'm gonna slow down a bit I'm gonna take a deep breath we we're three minutes into this recording and it I'm throwing a lot at you right now about a team that's probably the most boring and infuriating team which wasn't the expectation coming into this year for a rebuilding team you try to set one goal and I just wanted this team to be fun to watch something entertaining to watch and it starts with these rotations. And these rotations don't make sense. They genuinely don't make sense. I was at the Pistons Rockets game when uh, Jalen dunked over, not over Cade, but blew past Cade and yelled in his face. And I was at that game and it was a close game throughout and through. It was a ugly looking game, but it was a close game through and through. And around the end of the third quarter, early fourth quarter, there was a substitution. And that substitution had, I believe it was David Waba, Eric Gordon, Daniel House, Daniel Tice, and then a, another player that I don't, doesn't matter. I, I, I think it may have been Jay Sean Tate, right? The only young guy that was on that little veterans lineup, right? The Pistons went and proceeded to go on a 12-2 run. Rockets were down on a 10-point lead, which they came back without that lineup on the floor and lost the game and he and silas kept that rotation and that team out there that veterans lineup that i just mentioned from late third quarter to early fourth into a point where it was over and it feels like he's tanking and if that's the goal be more obvious about it 
and, and by be more obvious about it, put all the young guys out. What is the point of putting the veterans out? Because you're shooting yourself in the foot. If you want to tank, tank correctly. Don't tank by trying to lose games and then hinder the development of these guys that you put four first round picks in. And also, why are we tanking? Why, why are the Rockets tanking when they invested four first round picks? Are we trying to have a eight rotation of first round picks? It doesn't make sense to me. The only bright spot for this team has been Sengun, who by all rookie st standards and metrics has been one of the best rookies in the league and he doesn't even start. And with, with that, it makes even less sense to have Daniel Tice. I understand trying to have a big man to pair, pair with Christian Wood, but you drafted a big man to pair with Christian Wood. And to go with Christian Wood, to, since I mentioned him already, I don't know whether to trade him or not. He, when I watch him, he will have great halves at a time. He's like Texas football, only good for a half. And then he goes quiet and doesn't even shoot the ball or becomes aggressive. And I don't want to throw empty stats at him, but like, it's starting to feel like it. And that's not his fault. I feel like Silas has been holding these players back. And I don't know why he's still coaching because his responses are terrible. I hate to be so negative about this team. I wanted to feel happy and look at the bright spots and fight through the losses, but the losses are hurting way more than I could ever imagine because it's not even like the young guys are losing for us. It's veteran players that shouldn't even be on this roster. And I know I'm biased. This is my team. This is the team I want to root for and wish they go to the NBA finals and everything will be sunshine and rainbows. And I understand it's a rebuild, and I haven't had to experience a rebuild, but when the general manager, I believe, is making the right moves, and the coach is failing these young guys and putting them in positions to fail, and I feel like Jalen Green is being put into positions to fail because he's only getting touches off of picks and off of almost high uh, corner actions and small things and not letting him really create for himself unless it's created for him but then again it's not happening consistently and therefore i feel like he's streaky because the coach doesn't know when to use him or how to use him and they also don't know how to use kevin porter correctly and kevin porter's still trying to get used to a new position in a position i think he could do well in in a different offense if you staggered jalen and kpj i think it would have been better but that's not the point i'm not the head coach i don't know what's best but i can tell you these rotations are ridiculous. I don't understand them. They're Billy Donovan level of crazy to me. Luke Walton level of crazy. I don't understand it whatsoever. I don't understand why we are starting Daniel Tice. And if it's to have a veteran presence for a young big man like Christian Wood and Sengun, then where's a veteran point guard to start? for KPJ because it's clear that KPJ still needs some time and DJ Augustine and giving Eric Gordon the ball to play make Eric Gordon's not going to play make for you he's not make moves I understand you have John Wall on the roster and things are very limited but the direction of this team is undefinable it's you cannot de describe this offense they take I think they're number one in the league at shots at the rim and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're bottom 10 at shots at three, which is a big drastic change from the Mike D'Antoni year. And it's fine if you want to take shots at the rim, but I don't see this team scoring over 100. They could, they cannot score the ball and let it go, let alone uh, Christian Wood can't play defense. Jalen Green's still learning defense. Um, KPJ's still struggling. Jay Sean Tate's probably the only bright spot on defense, and he can only do so much as a second year player. I just, I'm blown away by the decisions by Steven Silas and it's his reactions and his quotes after the game disappoint me every time. He takes all the blame off of himself and in reality it's his decision making that is failing the Rockets and I, I know this is a quick video but it sucks to see this team not try to maximize its potential right now and instead obviously tank.